So friends, I know that some days seem dark on the justice front, but there is reason for optimism. Optimism that Donald Trump will be held accountable for his crimes. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So June 9 is rapidly approaching. The day public hearings open, the day we begin to see the evidence that has been amassed by the J6 committee investigating the insurrection, evidence from more than 1,000 witnesses, evidence that will show precisely what Donald Trump and his associates, his lackeys, his lapdogs, his co-conspirators did to try to overturn the results of a presidential election. Put another way, what they did to try to bring an end to our democracy. And just today, I read an excellent piece, a deep dive authored by former DOJ civil rights prosecutor, Christy Parker. And I will put a link to Ms. Parker's article in the description of this video. But here is the title of Ms. Parker's piece. Prosecuting Trump for the Insurrection, the well-founded case for optimism. Can I say that again? The well-founded case for optimism. And I'm going to read just a little bit of the article, but I really do urge you to take a few minutes and read it for yourself. The article opens, Since January 6, 2021, a national debate has swirled around whether former President Donald Trump will be investigated and prosecuted for any of the crimes he may have committed through his efforts to remain in office despite his clear election loss. A growing consensus has emerged among legal experts, scholars, and those otherwise concerned with the health of our democracy that Trump's actions to overturn the election warrant criminal accountability. That sentiment was significantly bolstered when a federal district court judge, David O. Carter, reviewing an effort by the House Select Committee investigating January 6 to obtain documents from a key witness, found that Trump had more likely than not committed federal crimes in trying to interfere with the electoral count proceedings that day. Judge Carter's pronouncement didn't break any news about the evidence or the potential crimes Trump committed, all of which have been well documented, but the impact of a matter-of-fact pronouncement on Trump's potential culpability from a federal judge was unmistakable. As one analyst wrote in the New York Times, the ruling intensified scrutiny on the question of whether the Justice Department can, should, or will try to charge him with the same crimes. And the article continues. When the evidence of Trump's intentions and actions is viewed through the lens of the cases the department and the select committee are building, including evidence of the ties between the foot soldiers who led the January 6 riots and Trump's inner circle, and in the context of the cases the department has already prosecuted, against other January 6 defendants, it, that is the evidence of Trump's guilt, looks formidable, not weak. And when it's examined in light of the department's principles of federal prosecution, Attorney General Garland should have little choice but to conclude that the implications for democracy and the rule of law of not prosecuting Trump far outweigh the risks of a trial loss which exist in every complex case. And then Ms. Parker goes on to analyze the evidence in support of just one crime committed by Donald Trump, obstructing an official proceeding in violation of 18 United States Code Section 1512 C2, that being the count of the electoral college votes, put another way, the certification of Joe Biden's win, and Ms. Parker then goes on to conclude 
A prosecution of Trump is both winnable and necessary, despite the known risks. Now, Ms. Parker goes on in her deep dive piece to talk about the elements of the crime of obstructing an official proceeding. Elements are just the component parts of the crime. So the different facts that the prosecutors need to prove in order to convince a jury that the defendant is guilty of the crime with which he is charged. She talks about the burden of proof. She talks about how circumstantial evidence is just as admissible and can be just as compelling as direct evidence. Direct evidence is, for example, a confession. But I can tell you in my 30 years as a federal prosecutor, I didn't have a whole lot of confessions. Um, and, you know, Donald Trump probably never did outright confess to his crimes, but friends, his every lie is a confession of one kind or another. So yes, circumstantial evidence can be just as powerful as direct evidence. She talks in her piece about the challenges of jury selection and how those challenges can be met and overcome. And she ultimately concludes by arguing that Donald Trump must be indicted and tried for his crimes, win, lose, or draw. And I wholeheartedly agree with Ms. Parker on that front. Now with the June 9 public hearings approaching, one thing I hope to do is to do a short video each day, perhaps in addition to my Daily Justice Matters videos, um, sort of recapping and analyzing the evidence we've seen presented from the witnesses um, during the public hearings, and then talking about how the evidence we see satisfies the elements of the various crimes that could be charged against Trump and company. And I strongly suspect, friends, at the end of those public hearings, there will be no question, no doubt, no reasonable argument, but that Donald Trump and his co-conspirators committed any number of federal offenses in their determination to overturn the elections results in Trump's determination to retain the office of the presidency unconstitutionally. And at that point, friends, the Department of Justice will have no other alternative but to charge Donald, Donald Trump and others for their crimes. And I believe DOJ will, because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.